Now, a massive 1.6 million people in the UK are affected by an eating disorder. This week is Eating Disorder Awareness Week, and joining me now is Ilona Burton, who's been affected by anorexia. Ilona, many thanks for joining us. Let's start off with your experience and how it's affected your life. Yeah, um, well, I started really, really young, um, not with a fully blown eating disorder, but with lots of little habits coming in. Um, when I was just seven, I was throwing away my sandwiches at school and hiding food and things. And it just gradually developed into an eating disorder from there, which then affected me for about 16 years. And did that eating disorder, the hiding of the sandwiches, why did that come around? Was there something that happened in your life at that point or were you looking at images in the pay or magazines and perhaps thought you wanted to look like them? Yeah, looking back, it's really hard to understand why because I wasn't old enough to know what these magazines were. The size zero debate wasn't around then. You know, the Spice Girls weren't even around. So I didn't have any of these skinny sort of models to look at. So it wasn't caused by that. And I don't know, there was no big trigger for it. So I really can't think of a reason why it started. And is your experience that, that people who do suffer with eating disorders, they've all got very different stories to tell. There's not one specific trigger. Definitely. I mean, being in hospital, you meet so many different people. Um, when I was in, there was a woman who was 68 and still suffering with an eating disorder. There were men, there were boys, there were, you know, Asian, black. Uh, just anyone can be affected, and that totally goes against the stereotype. And you mentioned being in hospital there, so mm. what help did you eventually get? Um, after quite a long time of suffering, I had three months in a local hospital and then a year of outpatient care and then I've just come out for another, another nine months and hopefully the last. <laughs> and so how is your health now? It's a lot better. I mean, I received a massive amount of care and the nurses and the staff and therapists and consultants at the place where I was were absolutely fantastic. Um, and my family and my boyfriend. I've, I've been very lucky to have such a supportive atmosphere. And is that ongoing care with nurses and consultants and therapists? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Um, the hospital that I went to, they offer an outpatient care for, you know, as long as you need it. But even after that, my GP is being great now. So you, you don't just fall out of the net, hopefully, in most places. And why do you think it's so important that we have an awareness week for eating disorders? Um... I'm, I'm amazed by how sort of big it's been, really, because it's been my first Eating Disorders Awareness Week where I've been an ambassador for BEAT. And, <clears throat> sorry, I've done so many interviews and stuff to spread awareness, and it's just such a massive problem in this country. It's just really important, important to get that message out there, to tell people that that help is there. Wonderful. And you are now on the way to being happy and healthy. Yeah. If you could just offer a sentence of advice for people who are perhaps going through the same thing, what would it be? Just don't keep it a secret. Don't keep it under wraps. Get help as soon as you can. And would, would the first port of call be your GP? Your GP or um, Beat, go to Beat's website. Okay, so that's wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.